Today's video is going to talk about pronoun case. That's a pretty weird sounding thing, but it's not as complicated as some people try to make it. And I think by the end of this video, you'll have a lot better idea of what pronoun case is and which one to use depending on what you're writing. So let's get started. Now, personal pronouns use different forms depending on what you're going to do with them in sentences. The form of the pronoun is called its case. There are three cases. They're called nominative, objective, and possessive. Now, if you look back at my teacher webpage, you'll see a chart with all of the personal pronouns and their cases. I'm also going to include that at the end of this video, and I'll upload it to Edmodo, so you'll always have access to that information. What we're going to talk about today is nominative and objective. We'll say possessive for the next video. Personal pronouns change their case depending on whether they function as subjects or objects. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Let's start with nominative. Personal pronouns that function as subjects or as predicate nominatives are in the nominative case. Now, let's just go back for a minute. Predicate nominatives are what follow linking verbs. Linking verbs are almost always the be verbs. Is, am, are, was, were, being, been. Sometimes words like feel or seem can also be linking verbs, but most of the time they're going to be the be verbs. Now, these predicate nominatives follow linking verbs. They point back to the subject to rename it or identify it further. Let's look at some examples. Here we have the subject I. I like the legends of King Arthur. That is a pronoun being used as a subject. So it is in the nominative case. Let's look at another example. He united the knights. The pronoun he is being used as a subject. So it's in nominative case. Let's move on with a little bit more information. Now, you need to be careful to use the nominative case when the pronoun is part of a compound subject. When you have a compound subject, things can get a little bit more complicated. But let's look at an example. Queen Guinevere and he were wife and husband. Now we have a compound subject, Queen Guinevere and he. The easy way to figure this out is to look at the parts separately. And I'll go into that a little more detail later. But you would say Queen Guinevere, etc., etc., if she were the subject by herself. And you would say he, if he were the subject by himself. So that's why you need to be sure that you use the correct case. I'll explain further as we go on. Now, a predicate pronoun also takes the nominative case. Now, a predicate pronoun, which I just talked about before, follows a linking verb, and it's going to rename the subject of the sentence. So let's look at an example. It was he who gathered the knights of the round table. Now, he is a predicate pronoun. It renames our subject it. So you use a predicate um, when you have a predicate pronoun, you're going to use the nominative case. Now, when you see at the end of this video the nominative case pronouns, you'll see that he is one of those pronouns. Now, this chart, as I said before, is also going to be on my webpage, and I'll upload it to the library on Edmodo, so you'll always have access to this information in case you get confused down the road. Now, let's move on to talk about objective case. Now, the objective case is one we use with pronouns that function as direct objects, indirect objects, or objects of prepositions. Now, I've shown an example of each one of those here. Merlin the wizard, Arthur's friend, helped him. Him is a direct object, so that's objective case. Merlin gave him loyalty. Now, Merlin gave loyalty, that's the direct object, to whom? Him, that makes him the direct object, the indirect object. So we're going to use the objective case. And now we also can use it as the object of a preposition. Most of Arthur's knights were also loyal to him. To him is a prepositional phrase, so him is the object of the preposition to. Now let's talk some more about objective case. You're also going to use the objective case of the pronoun when it's part of a compound object construction. So I know that sounds complicated, but when you look at the example, you'll see that it's really not that hard. The knights pledged allegiance to both Guinevere and him. We have Guinevere and him. That's the compound object of the preposition to. And, it, it, and I'm going to show you in a minute how to tell 
really quickly and easily which case to use because it can get confusing and people make a lot of mistakes. Again, I'm going to put an objective pronoun chart on my teacher webpage. It's also going to be at the end of this video and I'll upload it to Edmodo because I want you to have access to that information anytime you need it. So let's look at compound constructions. It's easy really to make sure you're using the correct case. And here's how you do it. You look at each part separately. So let's look at an example. Lancelot loved both Arthur and, are we going to say she, or are we going to say her? Then we have another sentence. She or her and Arthur both loved Lancelot. Now, before we get confused, it's easy. Deconstruct the sentence. Use each pronoun alone. So we're going to say Lancelot loved she, or would we say Lancelot loved her? She is nominative, her is objective. The only one that makes sense would be the objective case. Now let's look at the next example. She loved Lancelot, or her loved Lancelot. That's pretty obvious, it's she. So that would be the nominative case. So once you've broken it apart and made it into separate sentences, it's really easy to see which case to use is the right one. So, here's our sentences. Lancelot loved both Arthur and her. She and Arthur both loved Lancelot. If you ever find yourself getting confused, break the sentence into parts, try each pronoun, and see which one is the right fit. So here's some more examples. And this is a, a, a problem that a lot of people have. They make mistakes. And they'll write something because they think it's the correct way, but it's not the way they would say it. So let's look at them in some examples. A lot of people would say, her and I went to the movies. Now, even if somebody says this to you, you're going to understand what they mean. But it really is wrong, and here's how you'll be able to see. You wouldn't say, her went to the movies, but you would say, I went to the movies. So now we can see that instead of her, we need to say she. So the correct sentence would be, she and I went to the movies. Because her went to the movies doesn't make any sense. So let's try another one. Mark went to the movies with her and I. A lot of people say this. A lot of people think this is the correct way to do it. But let's break it down the same way we did before. Mark went to the movies with her. That's fine. Mark went to the movies with I. That is not going to work. So now what we can see we need to do is we need to change the pronoun I to another pronoun. So we would say Mark went to the movies with her and me. Or we could just say Mark went to the movies with us and that would also work. Now here's the charts I was telling you about. You can see personal pronouns. We have nominative and we have objective. We have first person, second person, and third person. We also have singular and plural. Now that's a lot of information. So I'm not going to read it to you, but I want you to know that it's here. And as I said before, I'm also going to put this on my teacher webpage. It'll be there all the time. And I'll also upload it to the library in Edmodo. So it'll be there at all times and you can see it anytime that you forget what those personal pronouns are and which case is which. I think once you start to get the hang of it, you'll realize I know these words, I use them all the time, now I just know what to call them. So let me show you the next chart. Here we have the nominative pronoun form. And we have singular and we have plural. These are words that we all use all the time. So it's really not something brand new you have to learn. Now you just have to learn what case they're in. And it's really going to be very simple once you start using these words. And here's the objective pronoun forms. Now like the other two charts, these are going to go on my teacher webpage. They're also going to go on Edmodo. So you will always have access to this information. And I think before you know it, you'll realize that you don't even need to look back at the charts anymore. You've memorized it and you're good to go. So hopefully this has made pronoun case a little bit more understandable for you. And you've learned a very quick, easy way to figure out which pronoun do I use in this sentence. Break the sentences down, you'll figure it out in no time.